Lakers. Knicks or Lakers? Who will go further this season? Shannon Sharp responds. All right, Lakers Nation. Today we're diving into an exciting debate that got everyone talking. Response. First off, Shannon is a huge Lakers fan and he made it crystal clear he's riding with the purple and gold all the way. The fan might have hoped for a different answer, but come on, we all know the truth here. The Lakers have a championship caliber squad with LeBron James and Anthony Davis leading the charge. Shannon, of course, emphasized that we have a much stronger team than the Knicks this season. And he's right. The Knicks might have improved, but let's be real. When it comes to competing in the West, our Lakers are up against the likes of the Nuggets, the Suns, and the Mavericks, not to mention our bench getting deeper with each passing season. Shannon Sharp pointed out that while teams like the Bucks, Celtics, and Heat are strong in the East, none of them are a bigger threat than our Lakers when it comes to reaching the finals. Conclusion? At the end of the day, as Shannon said, you can change your voice all you want, but the answer remains the same. The Lakers are going further. We've got the experience, the talent, and the hunger to push through and make a real run for that championship banner. What do you all think? Are you with Shannon on this one? Do the Lakers have what it takes to go all the way this season? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe to stay updated on all things Lakers. Let's go Lakers! In a recent episode of First Take, Stephen A. Smith tackled an intriguing question. Are the Memphis Grizzlies a bigger threat in the Western Conference than the Los Angeles Lakers? His answer was straightforward. No, the Grizzlies are not a bigger threat than the Lakers. Before we continue, I need your help. Three seconds to leave a like. Thank you. And Nikola Jokic. Of course, Stephen A. acknowledges Ja Morant's talent, predicting that he'll come back strong and make a significant impact this season. However, he believes Memphis doesn't have enough firepower to surpass the Lakers. Even with Marcus Smart joining the team in a healthy roster, Stephen A. argues that the Lakers have more depth and are better equipped to handle critical moments, especially with the growth of players like Austin Reeves and new additions to the squad. He praises the work that the Grizzlies coach can do, but reinforces that Anthony Davis is playing with the mindset of dominating every opponent, making the Lakers extremely dangerous when both LeBron and AD are healthy and in sync. While the Grizzlies have a lot of potential and could be a force in the West, the Lakers remain the top obstacle for any team looking to dominate the conference. The combination of experience, talent, and the hunger to win from LeBron and AD puts the Lakers a step ahead. Now, insights and updates on our favorite team, the Lakers. Go Lakers! Olivari dribbling, step back, three-pointer, good! And we're tied at 89. A 10-0 run for the Lakers.
the you know that fourth quarter obviously it's all young guys but are you of the of the opinion that like there's no such thing as garbage time every minute matters like the young guys can it can make a difference to do something like that and clearly you saw all the vets getting into it what, what do you take away from a, a run like that from the young guys ray allen used to always talk about um every time you step on the floor it's a tryout essentially there's always people watching you um there's guys that have earned a roster spot for their play in summer league, for their play in training camp, a preseason game, um, guys that have earned rotation minutes in garbage time in a regular season game. Um, so I, I don't take what that group did lightly at all. Um, really impressive. I thought in particular Quincy just completely changed the game. Um, and I, to me, and I told our guys this after, what he did um, is the blueprint for what we're asking for a, a few of our players in terms of just picking up full court, being disruptive, uh, taking time off the shot clock. Uh, I thought he just executed exactly what we want from someone in his position. And we've challenged a number of guys, and they've done it well to varying degrees, um, but haven't seen it executed that well uh, until tonight with Quincy. Yeah, speaking of Olivari, I, I was sitting right there in the corner so you could see you know, he's picking up full court and every time he's turning somebody over, that's what, what's getting LeBron off his seat. You know, just kind of appreciating those things. Uh, that, uh, what else do you know about him? Obviously, he was there in the summer. He's on an E10. Uh, with how, what can you tell us about Quincy and the kind of the type of player he is? Um, so he's got a background running cross country. So he's in unbelievable shape at all times. Uh, when we did all of our conditioning in September, he won nearly every run. For August and September, when we had our light days uh, and we did our uh, shooting drills, um, he, I think, has the highest score in nearly every shooting drill we have. Um, he takes the game very seriously. He's a player who... I talk about care factor, like he's a player who has a care factor for doing it the right way and wanting uh, to execute whatever vision you give him. Um, I'm excited that he's in our program. I really am. Um, we, we, we look at him uh, as a coaching staff in, in very high regard. Other takeaways, uh, maybe you can go back to the first half and you know, when that starting group is out there, uh, minus Austin. And did you feel like you got some of the things done that you had listed pregame that were focuses? Yeah, we again, we, we didn't necessarily game plan, but we gave them three things pregame that we truthfully haven't had a ton of time to work on. Uh, one was our pick and roll coverage with Dame, which conceptually we haven't practiced once. And I thought Max Christie and our bigs did a really good job. Uh, we gave them some veer to pop against their popping bigs. We executed it a little bit. Not great, uh, but a little bit. We've had about five minutes in practice. That's all the time we've had so far to practice that. Uh, and then, you know, our loads in transition to Giannis, which we showed him on tape. You know, that's what we had time for. So would have been nice to have a practice day yesterday, but... <clears throat> them's the breaks so um, that wasn't great our transition defense in the first half was not great overall I thought the group that played the first half did a nice job JJ back to Quincy it seemed like I mean, we haven't spoken about but just seeing how other people have reacted to him it seems like there's like a magnetism mm -hmm. a little bit with him um, what have you seen from like the way people have reacted to him and what was it like being on the bench seeing your regulars yeah, like he's kind of kind of quickly quickly catch on what he was doing. Yeah, Quint, Quincy again. He's he's been in our gym now for a couple months. Um, besides just the summer league, um, he has a he has an infectious spirit and soul about him. It's not that he's some super talkative, boisterous guy, um, but he just carries himself well. He carries himself with intent. His work ethic is really high. And I think people respond to that. And when you have someone who cares, who's a good teammate, who does all the right things, and then he comes in a game and is picking up full court with a bloody mouth and changing the entire dynamic for us as a team, um, it's easy to respond to that as a, as a teammate and as a coaching staff. And I thought he just he, he lit a fire for us.